Good morning. Welcome again. Today's topic is as of God. As of God. The reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verse 12 to 25. Romans chapter 8, verse 12 to 25. Let me read. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. If you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body. You will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the re revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childhood, childbirth until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we will save. Now, hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. After COVID, a lot of people have a lot of desperate prayer requests during COVID and after COVID. A lot of people felt sick and facing sickness and illnesses and loss of loved ones and some going through traumas some loss of treasures and assets, some loss, some were lost in the world. Not sure what the world is coming up. So that desperate prayer request is because there was no hope. They wanted hope. Paul, when he wrote this letter to the Roman church, and he knew the Roman church are facing difficulties. But Paul gave them positive assurance because they were also feeling sad because of the Roman Emperor, Roman Empire, and they themselves are having hard times, not sure what is going to happen. Of course, history tells us that they have to keep up everything and run for their lives later on. But during the time of Paul, and when Paul wrote these letters, they were struggling. So Paul gave them positive assurances. What are the assurances that Paul gave them? So in verse 14, Paul says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Paul re-emphasized, you are the sons of God. I mean, you belong to God. Verse 15 says, you are, you know, you do not receive spirit, the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons. And then by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Now you, you can call God the Father. 
And if verse 17 and verse 16, the Spirit Himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So then you say, how do we know? It was the Spirit of God who bears witness. So we trust the Spirit of God who says, if I tell you you are the child of God, you say, I don't believe. But then when the Spirit of God speaks to you, and you are the child of God, you are the child of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Paul here actually positively assured them, he says that the world may not want you, the empire may not want you, but then God wants you. And God has made you his sons, the sons of God, and you are adopted into sonship. And now the Spirit Himself witness that you are children of God. And since you are children of God, He says you are the heirs of God and fellow heirs of Jesus Christ. So you are descendant. You share the property, assets, and benefits with Jesus. So Paul gives him very positive assurance. The world don't like you, but God wants you. God likes you, God welcomes you, so put your trust in God. Then when you ask, how can one become children of God? So Paul in verse 13 says, live by the Spirit. If you live by the Spirit, you will live. You know? Then verse 14 says, you, if you are led by the Spirit of God, you are sons of God. Verse 15 says, if you receive the Spirit, you are a child, children of God. And verse 16 says, The Spirit Himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So in a sense, live by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, receive the Spirit, then the Spirit testify and witness that you are children of God. All these are through believing and accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Believing that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and accepting Jesus into our heart and that we will be given the resurrection, new life forever. <laughs> then when we are children of God, Paul says, since you are children of God, uh, you belong to God. And God's benefits and God's, uh, you are God's beneficiary and God's uh, assets and God's belonging go, comes to you. But Paul goes on to say, yes, you know, it's like we are having a ticket to heaven and since we now believe in Jesus, we are son of God, sons of God, we are heirs of God, we can get everything from God, blessing, but we are almost there, we are not there yet. Not there. What do you mean? There, almost there, not there? Because that final day has not come yet. Paul is saying that that final day will come until, until you are realized. You know, it's almost a, a lot of time that when, when we start a new business, that people who start a new business, he bought a property, said yes, this is going to be the new business, and he renovated it, and he took months to renovate, and then he brought all the goods in and then he said one day. So on the day he signed the agreement and to pay the money for that shop lot and he says now I, I own this shop lot and I am now the boss of this business. But then you wait for a couple of months of restoration, renovation, and then you wait for some more time to bring in the goods then you only start your business. And so by the time you start the business, it will be a year later. Then he says, this period of time is waiting, waiting and preparing and for the coming, for the opening. Then you open, you invite all your guests to come on the day of opening. So the same thing, we now accept Jesus Christ. God said, you belong to me and we have direct access to God. And, but you still have to wait for the day of coming, a preparation. And so we are almost there, but not yet. And we, 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 got, we, we got a ticket to heaven, but not got to heaven yet. <laughs> because he says that 
In verse 19, not only that we go to heaven, he says in verse 19, the creation waits with eager longing. The creation is waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. The creation on the first day of the man's sin in this world. Uh, so the creation is longing and crying out, waiting for that day when the sons of God return and they are reveal who are the sons of God and the creation waits <laughs> for verse 20 for the creation was subjected to futility not willingly but because of him who subjected it in hope so the creation is waiting for in hope that then one day it will happen <laughs> and then verse 21 the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of glory of the children of God so when that day when the children of God is free and the creation will be free as well. Verse 22, For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in pains of childbirth until now. <laughs> the whole creation is groaning and groaning, waiting for that day when it's coming, when is it coming, when is it coming. And when the revealing of the sons of God, the children of God, is set free to the glory then the creation will know that that day will come so everyone in the whole world is waiting the creation waiting we are waiting everybody is waiting and uh, but yet we are there just like a child was looking at the mother making cake and he put all the flour put all the water put all the butter everything will click together and make the batter and stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it. After stirring it already, then he says, okay, we pour into the container, we put into the oven and set the time, waiting. The child, wait, 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 ask the mother, when is it ready? When is it ready? He said, wait, that's maybe within an hour uh, for the oven to bake the cake. <laughs> so the child's waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. So everybody's waiting for the cake to come out and so th that's the same thing uh, the whole world is waiting Paul says we we too have to wait in hope we just don't wait uh, lying at, around doing nothing we wait in hope he says verse 23 and not only the creation but we ourselves who we who have the first fruits of the spirit we we have the first fruit now we are first fruit and but we still groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons the redemption of our bodies because that day we will be having a resurrected body a new body we believe in body resurrection so that day we are still waiting that's why today we are waiting here and then we say, yes, we have the image of God, we have the God and Jesus in us, and with the Spirit in us, then how come we cannot do all the things? We wait. And how come we are not there yet? We wait. Because in preparation, we wait in hope of this perfection that will come. So verse 24, for in this hope we will save. So we are saving. So we trust and move towards that hope. Press on, press on, you know. So we wait for it with patience. Verse 25 says, <laughs> But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Yes, the hope we cannot see, but we wait for it in patience, working towards preparation and anticipation. So this is we who are looking forward and moving forward. So now, while waiting, he says that we, well, listen to God and prepare ourselves and together, uh, working with Him. I was saying earlier on, uh, house of renovation, we just don't stand there and see, though the house belongs to us. Now we go get involved and get the house restored and we check and see the restoration is done properly and according to the way we want to design and the way we want it to be have to 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 set out uh, how the shop should be like so we 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 come in every day 
we prepare and watch and get things done all done so we get for the right furnitures and right lightings and curtains and chairs and tables and everything ready waiting for it and so then that day will come and there will be a great celebration I can see a child who's waiting for his birthday. He says, how long more is my birthday? He says, six months. Then he counts again. How, many, how long more? He says, four months. How long more? He says, three months. How long more? Two months. How long more? One month. And how long more? And you know, he says that, oh, 10 days. And oh, next day he says, oh, no, nine days left. Eight days left. He's waiting in anticipation because until the three days, two days and one day is tomorrow and so excited and tomorrow when it comes then he has this birthday cake and celebration and the friends and all come and so a big celebration will come so we wait patiently in hope for the coming of that day that we will be completely united with God and completely restored into God's image uh, completely. So that is a perfect uh, restoration will come on that day. So today, Paul is telling the Romans, he says that, hey, my friend, don't be despair. You know, yes, there's a lot of prayers and despair, desperate prayers, but never mind. And God, you know, when you look at God, first He has called us and given us to be adopted as sons of God and children of God. And then, when, then he will mold us, prepare us for the great day, great day to come. So let us willingly work with God, prepare. And we must know what God wants. We must be willing to work with Him. We must be attentive to know how to work with Him. And we also must be offering ourselves to complete the task as easy as possible. So that is when we call the new term Paul use it called sanctification. So it is to make it more perfect, purer, holier until that day we can be with God and see God face to face. So that is a great time we are looking forward to and Paul says, and that's when you are not only in name, the heirs of God, you know, but you are in real terms, truly ready to receive all the complete blessing of God. So everything will be restored back to ourselves, to the normal person that we, like Adam in the Garden of Eden is to be perfected again by God. So God said, you shall be perfect as I am perfect. You shall be holy as I am holy. You shall be whole as I am whole. So that's where God called us back to Himself. Let's together work with Him and not only pray, but prepare ourselves to understand Him, hear Him, walk with Him, listen, do his word and do his word. Let's pray. Father Almighty, we thank you that you heard our prayers. You know how desperate we are in such difficult situation. But yet you hear our prayer and you prepare us. And you say, now you are chosen and adopted as children of God. We praise you. We thank you for this privilege. And as you say, your spirit witness in our spirit that we are children of God. And you ask us to wait in hope for patiently for that day to come. But while waiting, you want us to listen to you, to walk with you, to pray with you, and to do the work that you want us to do. That we will cooperate and we will share and we will journey with you together. Thank you, Lord. Be with us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.